All right, so if we're gonna declare our list of all-time hacking all-stars, what makes the top? War Games. That's just a movie. Oh, sure, that didn't really happen? <laughs> no, it did not. The modern rogue puts on the max right. headroom mask. Swordfish. In the hall of fame of hacking, I have to assume that the biggest display is for one incident, the Max Headroom broadcast signal intrusion. Yes, people were terrified about it. Dude, time. I would be terrified. I saw the footage and it was like there was something wrong and sideways about it. I cannot imagine being somebody just watching Doctor Who and all of a sudden somebody took over a television station, right? Yes, it's someone basically hijacking the television signal and showing their own audio or video. Now, I understand this in terms of like FM signals. Like you could get a pirate radio transmitter and broadcast a pirate radio station. This case is somebody hijacked I guess what the the carrier signal between a remote thing that's exactly what it is what broadcast television stations do they have their signal they broadcast it to a bigger transmitter on top of a high-rise building or something like that and then it goes out to the surrounding area so someone interrupted that by getting close to the transmitter. Enough to overpower the original source yes. and have their signal go out. Yes, and they're not entirely sure how they did it, but it's likely that it was something the size of a dish TV network thing that was placed really close to the transmitter and they just overrode it for 30 seconds. One of the remarkable aspects of this is that there were two intrusions on two different stations within three hours of each other. The first one happened during the news on WGN. It was a really brief interruption. There was no audio that was really discernible, but you saw this Max Headroom clad individual. And then it happened again within three hours during the middle of PBS broadcasting Doctor Who. The very act of the pirate signal means that an extraordinary amount of effort went into doing this, including the background and the masks and all that stuff, but it's as though zero thought went into what he was going to say when he got there. Yeah. So it's 1987, you're a kid just chilling out in your parents' basement watching Doctor Who, and all of a sudden, boom. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. So when he's talking about Chuck Swirsky, that's a local news anchor, right? Yeah, there were a lot of Chicago specific references in the broadcast with the audio. The voice distortion on here is really unsettling. So the voice distortion is happening, I assume, partly to mask this person identity, right? Sure. So that's not an artifact of poor pirating. That is just like full on, they're hiding. It might be a little bit of both at this point because this was 30 years ago. <laughs> to emulate the, you know, the digital background from the Max Headroom videos, uh, they had to go to the hardware store and buy some stuff and set it up on a pivot. And yes. somebody is back there right now. And that was one of the hunches that they were trying to follow up in order to find out who did it because there were only a couple of warehouses that could accommodate a giant eight foot corrugated metal thing. Yeah, yeah. But those didn't pan out. Do you even know what clutch cargo is? I do. Yeah. What is what is it? Okay, so do you remember the scene with young Butch in Pulp Fiction where uh, Christopher Walken comes in and says, yeah, this is your father's watch and blah, oh, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what the little kid was watching. No it kidding. was mostly like still frames and they would have people's lips over it. Like oh, that yeah, orange. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's clutch cargo. Oh my I God. Think. Clutch cargo with his pal Spinner and Battlefoot in another exciting adventure. This is kind of terrifying. I mean, a lot of what he's saying seems to be calling out people at the other station, WGN, mm -hmm. right? So at this point, we have a scene change. It's very clear this was pre-taped, right? Yeah. And there's a butt. That's a butt. <laughs> now, that's the point that you start to run into difficult territory. I mean, it's one thing to pirate a station. It's another thing to pirate a station and also not honor the FCC. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
All right, so let's talk about the hunt to find Max Headroom. Why can't you just know who this person is? Well, immediately they suspected that it was going to be an inside job, but that didn't pan out at first. Now you're telling me that maybe they're back to thinking it was? There was a great Reddit thread where somebody said he thought he knew who the people were and actually launched a big investigation and has since come away saying, well, from talking to all the original sources, the people who were actually there working for those networks, he feels now like it had to be some kind of inside job. There's too much insider information. There was no out in the wild equipment that would allow you to hijack a signal like that. The FCC got involved, the FBI got involved, and yet unfortunately they couldn't get all of the participation they needed and they were trying to raid various locations throughout Chicago to follow up on hunches and none of them panned out. Well, and plus also it's like, yeah, imagine working at the FBI. Are you really, is that the hill you're gonna die on? Is I'm gonna be the guy who finally figures out who's behind that Max Headroom mask? Uh, no, you're gonna like, there's a child murderer that you really ought to be focused on instead of this guy. People were terrified because if these jackasses could hijack a signal, what did the future hold? Oh sure, that yeah. This, this could be rampant. But now you've got encrypted uh, signals and so forth, and it's a lot more difficult to do that. Plus, not a lot of people watch broadcast television anymore. The question is though, really what everyone wants to know, if you were going to intrude on any episode of any television show, what would it be? I would invade the series finale of Battlestar Galactica and put an ending that made sense. <laughs> I would do uh, one of the big battles in Game of Thrones, and then just me off of the tree line, just being like. <laughs> you would just, you would somehow get their signal. It's just middle of the biggest battle, end of the series, <laughs> and it just cut to 30 seconds of you drinking and staring Watching at the camera. Watching really intently. Like... <laughs>
All right, so let's talk about the hunt to find Max Headroom. Why can't you just know who this person is? Well, immediately they suspected that it was going to be an inside job, but that didn't pan out at first. Now you're telling me that maybe they're back to emulate the, you know, the digital background from the Max Headroom videos. Uh, they had to go to the hardware store and buy some stuff and set it up on a pivot. And yes. somebody is back there right now. And that was one of the hunches that they were trying to follow up in order to find out who did it because there were only a couple of warehouses that could accommodate a giant eight-foot corrugated metal thing. Yeah, yeah. But those didn't pan out. Do you even know what clutch cargo is? I do. Yeah. What is What is it? Okay, so do you remember the scene with young Butch in Pulp Fiction where uh, Christopher Walken comes in and says, yeah, this is your father's watch and blah, oh, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what the little kid was watching. No It kidding. was mostly like still frames and they would have people's lips over it. Like oh, that yeah, orange. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's clutch cargo. Oh my I God. Think. Clutch cargo with his pal Spinner and Battlefoot in another exciting adventure. But it's as though zero thought went into what he was going to say when he got there. Yeah. So it's 1987, you're a kid just chilling out in your parents' basement watching Doctor Who, and all of a sudden, boom. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. So when he's talking about Chuck Swirsky, that's a local news anchor, right? Yeah, there were a lot of Chicago specific references in the broadcast with the audio. The voice distortion on here is really unsettling. So the voice distortion is happening, I assume, partly to mask this person person's identity, right? Sure. So that's not an artifact of poor pirating. That is just like full on, they're hiding. It might be a little bit of both at this point because this was 30 years ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to 